Ted Kaczynski uh, is a very interesting case because evidently he was a pretty well adapted kid in elementary school and actually was considered to be something of a leader. And then somebody got the bright idea that he should take an IQ test. He did and got an IQ score of 167. You have to have 140 to be uh, defined as a genius. So what's 167? That's one out of a million people. It was recommended by the school that he skip a grade when he was only 10 years old. So to skip from fifth to seventh grade. The problem with it is he was with older kids that he didn't know. He became more and more socially isolated. David, his younger brother, reports that at one point, Kaczynski was being very mean to him. And Ted says, well, sometimes geniuses can be sadistic. He was acknowledging that as a genius, he could be bad, sadistic, and he could work that genius for evil. Ted Kaczynski graduated from Harvard in 1962 at the age of 20. He then pursued his PhD at the University of Michigan, where he did groundbreaking work in the field of mathematics. One of the hallmarks of his intelligence was in the late 60s, he won an award for his dissertation, in fact, his PhD in mathematics at Ann Arbor in Michigan, because he solved a theorem that had been thought unsolvable for decades by mathematicians. He solved it and published it. From Michigan, then, he went to Berkeley to teach mathematics. He was the youngest assistant professor that the mathematics department had ever had. But the students hated him, absolutely loathed him. He didn't have any class hours. He wouldn't talk to them. I mean, he was very disdainful of everybody. His genius was in everything but social commerce with other people. He wasn't able to negotiate the social world with other people. And so he grew convinced that he had to get away from people, away from society. In 1969, Kaczynski suddenly and unexpectedly resigned from his position at Berkeley. He then withdrew from society by moving to Lincoln, Montana, where he lived in a small cabin that did not have running water or electricity. The cabin was just this rustic place off the grid, eight by 12 feet. That was his getting off the grid and getting so far away from civilization, everything. He was very happy when he first moved to the woods. He wrote rapturously about it, about how beautiful it was. But then planes started flying overhead. He noticed motorcyclists riding through the forest and disturbing the nature that he was glorying in. It turned to bitter hatred of the technological society. He viewed technology as evil, as the evolution of technology as evil, and the technical class as perverting the human spirit. What he discovers is he can't get away from society even there. The society that he's trying to escape is closing in on him anyway and there's nothing he can do about it. So he strikes back. He had taught himself bomb making. He ended up creating chemical mixes, melting his own components and casting them and putting them into the devices, carving wood to make specific trigger switches. He was a brilliant criminal in that he was able to expertly exclude anything identifying himself, any hairs, any fibers, any fingerprints. He was unlike any bomber that we had seen before. In 1978, Kaczynski carried out his first attack by mailing a parcel containing a homemade bomb to Northwestern University. It was the beginning of a reign of terror during which he carried out a total of 16 bombings over the course of nearly two decades. For Kaczynski, these attacks were not random killings, but rather targeted strikes against the institutions he believed represented technological society. His purpose was to, to wake people up to the dangers of technology. He would not have been able to promote his views if he had not gotten the attention of the media and the government 
in law enforcement by killing people with his bombs. That was his goal. In 1995, Kaczynski wrote an anonymous 35,000 word anti-technology manifesto that he demanded to be published in major newspapers. Ironically, it was a decision that would lead to his undoing. Ted's brother, David, had read the manifesto, and phrases jumped out at David right away, and he had to try to push them down. That can't be, can't be. There were phrases that appeared in the manifesto that were unusual, spellings that appeared that were unusual, and David recognized him. The upshot was that finally David and his wife went to an attorney in DC and said, we'd like to approach the FBI. On April 3rd, 1996, FBI agents finally arrested Kaczynski at his Montana cabin. 